Today, Iran is closer to being able to build nuclear weapons than it was in 2003 at the end of the Ahmad plan, its large-scale nuclear weapons program in the early 2000s, aimed at building five nuclear weapons with cores of weapon-grade uranium. Since the Ahmad plan, Iran has focused on creating an uranium enrichment program able to make weapon-grade uranium, a capability that was years away in 2003 when the Ahmad plan was halted. It now has established a vast uranium enrichment program, housed in multiple facilities, based on advanced centrifuges, and is well practiced in producing up to 60% enriched uranium, a small step from weapon grade uranium and even produced uranium metal, an important component of a nuclear bomb. Iran has strategic and political reasons to build nuclear weapons, and therefore currently has the best chance to do so before it is too late. At the moment, Iran has a valuable opportunity to build a nuclear arsenal, an opportunity that may not last forever. Iran will undoubtedly reach a point sooner or later where it will have to make a tough decision to either build nuclear weapons or its nuclear program associated with massive expenditures over especially the last two decades, possibly be destroyed in an admittedly risky Western military campaign. If some key nuclear facilities like in Natanz or the Yellow Cake production facility get destroyed, it could take Iran up to a decade, if not more, to rebuild its program. So the point now or never will definitely come. Iran has currently a nuclear weapons readiness program. However, this option alone is most likely not enough if it is seen by the leadership as a kind of threat strategy to extract more concessions from Western powers. Therefore, a readiness program that serves only for threat purposes will most likely cost the Iranian leadership and in general Iran a tactical and strategic nuclear arsenal and will result in a painful end to its nuclear aspirations and ultimately a historic loss of power in Iran, leading to the collapse of its political structures. For now Iran has a large and complex nuclear program and its nuclear status is absolutely credible. Under the Ahmad plan, Iran did have a nuclear weapons program like the one in Pakistan or in South Africa in the 1970s and 1980s and its nuclear program is way beyond what is sometimes called a latent nuclear weapons program, a term often pinned on Japan because it has a large stock of separated plutonium. Iran's leadership is thinking about nuclear weapons, preserving nuclear weapons capabilities, including related information and equipment, advancing those capabilities and fighting off exposure and demands for greater transparency. Iran has an active capability with key nuclear weaponization abilities in place, and there is highly likely a plan to exercise the option to make nuclear weapons within a short period of time, including a process or at least a strategy if the supreme leader decides to do so. Traditional definitions of a nuclear weapons program therefore do not fit Iran's situation today particularly when they are applied to assessments of whether specific aspects of nuclear weaponization are active or not. In the context of Iran, as was the case for Taiwan, a more realistic and useful definition of a nuclear weapons program should include a program that is preparing itself to build nuclear weapons, if an order is given. Iran is developing and maintaining various nuclear capabilities that better position it to produce nuclear weapons, should the leadership choose to build them. An active management structure, as indicated by the maintenance of a secret nuclear weapons archive, would qualify as evidence indicative of an ongoing nuclear weapons effort. The Iranian nuclear program has both overt and covert components, as well as potential non-nuclear overt and covert programs. Iran has at a minimum an active nuclear weapons readiness program, a capability amplified since the Ahmad plan. Its readiness program is centered at both secret and safeguarded facilities. Iran's longtime leader of its nuclear weapons efforts was Dr. Mohsen Fakhrizada, with the support and guidance of Iran's most senior leadership. He led the Ahmad plan and its predecessor organization, the Physics Research Center, known by its acronym PHRC. He continued leading Ahmad's successor organizations, the most recent known by its acronym, SBND, which included many former members of the Ahmad plan, until his assassination by Mossad in November 2020 in Ayabsard near the city of Tehran. 
His assassination was a setback for Iran and has complicated maintaining a nuclear weapon readiness capability. Given his enormous amount of institutional knowledge, his recognized managerial skills, and his political influence. However, Fakhrizadeh and his colleagues from the Ahmad plan also mentored a new generation that are sufficiently capable to carry on, despite Fakhrizadeh's assassination. In addition, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard IRGC and Iran's military industries have a variety of experienced managers, two of which emerged as heads of SBND following Fakhrizadeh's assassination in late 2020, both well-versed in Iran's missile and other military industries. The first replacement was IRGC Brigadier General Mahdi Farahi, or Saeed Mahdi Farahi. He was formerly deputy of Iran's Ministry of Defense for Armed Forces Logistics, Modiful, and managing director of the Defense Industries Organization, DIO, and head of the Aerospace Industries Organization, AIO. He was also reportedly involved in the development of an 80-ton rocket booster being jointly developed by Iran and North Korea, and traveled to Pyongyang, North Korea during contract negotiations. Farahi remained as head of SBND for less than a year, being replaced in September 2021 by Reza Mozafarinia, or Reza Mozafarinia Hossein. Mozafarinia is a former deputy defense minister of Modiful and dean of Malik Ashti University, MET, a university controlled by Modiful. Mozafarinia has made significant contributions to Iran's missile program according to his U.S. Treasury Department designation in 2013. A priority was stabilizing SBND after Fakhrizadeh's assassination, and they both accepted orders to continue with Fakhrizadeh's methods. As a result, the structure of SBND did not change after his death. The core AMAD groups remain intact, in particular the explosive and radiation groups. Former AMAD personnel remain senior experts in these programs. The core of Iran's nuclear weaponization capabilities therefore remain in SBND under new leadership. If the Iranian leadership decides to build nuclear weapons, despite the loss of such a unique leader of its nuclear weapons program, it maintains the expertise and managers to do so. This is the end of Iran's nuclear weapons and readiness program, part 1, and see you soon in the second part.